Hey there, my name is Lexi, and thank you so much for joining me for the read-along of Omarion's book, Unbothered, The Power of Choosing Joy. Today, we are reading part two, physical. Chapter four, Mastering Emotions, Unbothered. Mastering Emotions, Meditation. I can trust myself even when negativity greets me. I breathe. I will control myself for the best outcome. I breathe. I trust that my decisions direct me to my highest potential. I breathe. I belong in the presence and wholeness of peace. I breathe. I know when I am self-aware and connected to my emotions. I breathe. I seek clarity through the knowledge of self. I breathe. I feel a sense of inner strength when I am open to vulnerability. I breathe. I am content and accepting of the present moment. I breathe. Embarking on the Millennium Tour was one of the most challenging moments in my career. Reconnecting with B2K after a messy breakup wasn't easy by any means. There was so much pressure to perform even when we weren't getting along. Tension filled the air so thick some days that you could literally feel it. But I had a job to do. And as a performer, I took my job very seriously. Everyone from the stage crew to the band, dancers, and sound techs were there because of us. They were counting on us to do our parts so that they could do theirs and in turn take care of themselves and their families. There was no way that I could let the adversity I had been facing with the group get in the way of so many other moving parts. Choosing to show up and not be reactive to the negativity that could be a distraction was intentional. Mastering my emotions through a 44 date tour almost seemed like one of the most impossible things I could accomplish as a man. Usually, people aren't finding themselves in a position like this, where they're back on tour with people who dragged them through the mud and infiltrated their personal life in a disrespectful way. No one chooses to go on tour with people they have tumultuous relationships with. In one breath, shit could pop off at any moment, but putting myself in this position was a pivotal moment for me and my growth. It was a beautiful moment, looking back on it today. The Millennium Tour was historic. We brought fans back to their childhoods. It was completely invigorating to look out into the crowd and see the people who grew up with B2K and our music be in such an amazing space of joy and nostalgia, despite what was going on behind the scenes. There was much power in learning more about being emotionally intelligent and deciding to stand in my power. Feeding into the negativity was not an option for me, no matter how hard it was not to. I've been thinking a lot about what I would tell my children if they were in a similar situation as I was and what I would teach them about moving through hardship. Life is hard. People will hurt us. And even with that being a part of the truth and a part of our human experience, we get to decide where our emotional energy goes. There is divinity in choosing not to be reactive when things get uncomfortable or when someone intentionally hurts us. Unforeseen occurrences happen all the time. I instill in them that they have the strength that it takes to know what to do. Outside of leading by example for my children, Ame and Mega, I do my best to communicate with them in a way that they can understand. I've had conversations with the two of them about how important it is to get curious about the adversity in front of them. As a grown man who had just walked through the tensions of a tour with former bandmates, in teaching my children to find curiosity in hard moments, I was also teaching myself. Just because you've had a fucked up experience in the past doesn't mean you have to keep that cycle going. Choose to do something different. Choose to do better. Choose to be great. The world knows the very public humiliation connected with my children's mother and bandmate. Their relationship and the overall tension and embarrassment happened while I was on tour, which further pushed me into mastering how I responded and how I showed up, not only in my work, but also in my personal life. Spiritually, a lot of things were shifting for me and I refused to let the distraction of other people's inner turmoil bleed out onto me and throw me off my game. I could have fought with Fizz throughout the tour. I could have refused to co-parent with the mother of my children. 
I could have talked about this complicated family situation publicly to shame them, but I didn't. Reacting that way wouldn't have helped anything. I wasn't interested in dealing with them on that low vibrational level. I was being tested energetically and I was committed to staying close to my integrity, not only for me, but also for my children. I knew they were watching me more closely than I may have noticed. My behavior during this emotionally trying time mattered. When we have children, they are paying close attention to us even when we don't think they are. If we aren't careful, our behaviors and shortcomings can recreate and manifest themselves in unhealthy ways to our offspring. Mastering my emotions showed me firsthand that I was only in charge of myself and how people saw me, especially during this tumultuous time, was important. How my kids see me when they look back years later and see the videos circulating online about this is important. How we show up and act in this world matters. And I also want my behavior to be a reflection of that in a good light. Of course, I'm not perfect, but I am committed to being honest, kind, and clear. This is vital for me and valuable for my children. As a person with freedom and autonomy, it's essential to know when to take a step forward and not get caught up in what you are leaving behind. Knowing what kind of footprint you wanna leave on this planet requires making deliberate choices even when the voyage tests your patience. My footprints are the stepping stones for my kids. Leading with love and compassion was my only option. I hope that Ame and Mega take away the importance of patience when they get older and eventually learn about this experience with me and their mother. I hope they gather wealth and knowledge about relationships and the value of taking time to know themselves and grow to have the emotional capacity to receive and respect others, no matter the hardship at hand. I pledged to myself that I wouldn't get stuck on why things were happening. I could have easily gotten lost in a why is this happening to me mindset, but instead I started looking for the lesson in what was showing up, in what was right in front of me. Investing time and energy in being angry and upset about the things that were happening around me was not productive. It wouldn't change anything either. So I chose to honor what was going on and decide how I would push through, no matter what came my way. Affirmations for being unbothered. Read these out loud in a seated position. I am rooted deeply in my truth. I will not fall victim to the distraction of hatred. I am in charge of myself and where my energy goes. I am not bothered by things I cannot control. I will control myself, my love, and my heart. I am unbothered in the best way. What it means to me. Being unbothered isn't just something that I live by. It's something that I deeply believe brings me peace. Life has a funny way of testing us. And over the years, I have had my fair share of being tested. However, deciding that certain things, people, and energies were not allowed into my space was a turning point. I became dedicated to self-control, love, and compassionate understanding. Hurt people have tried to hurt me. Broken people have tried to break me. I have not let either happen because my peace is protected by a divine source. I am whole in the face of destruction. I have a sound mind in the face of emotional unrest. I have learned to be unbothered so that my light isn't dimmed by darkness. Reader Reflection Make a list of everything that is bothering you in your journal. Cross off the things that you cannot change at this very moment. Circle the things that you can change today. Start the things that are a work in progress. If you are on a quest to live an unbothered life, this practice can help you regain control of your emotions and focus on what you can change and what you cannot. Being intentional is a choice that no one can take from you, even when they try their hardest. Facing the challenges of being on tour and seeing the news about my children's mother and a former band member seemingly everywhere I looked was not a walk in the park. I wasn't not upset, but I was more focused on my character and what responding versus reacting looked and felt like on a professional and personal level. It affected me in a profound way and in a multitude of ways. What I was becoming more aware of is the truth behind there always being two sides. 
On one side, everything coming to the surface was the necessary information that I needed to further my knowledge of self. It was the permission I needed to trust in myself more. I needed to be reminded of things I saw that I overlooked. I needed my true self to step up and remind me of who I really was. Moving forward in grace was the display of good karmic energy I was putting out into the world, even during a really shitty time. When the news came out about Drew in April, everyone was looking at me to have this intense reaction. Rightfully so. I could have easily fucked shit up. This was indeed an emotional thing to go through. Having millions of witnesses was pretty wild too, but reacting seldom gets us anywhere, especially when emotions are high. Being clear-minded so that I could be emotionally sound was my goal. And with much self-reflection and time to think, I had to take some responsibility for the things and behaviors I allowed to proceed. Mastering my emotions when handling this situation really matured me. It made me become a real man, not just the idea of one. I wouldn't have been able to respond in the way I did without having spent my 20s and beyond focusing on my spiritual development, prioritizing my physical wellness over being in the club all the time, honing my creative voice, and leaning into my role as a father. I imagine that if this had happened before I became more aware of the importance of staying grounded, things would have played out differently. Over the years, I had evolved and set out to be a man of dignity, respect, and good character. So even though I was dealing with such a public and humiliating thing, I was proud of myself for making the choice to not take the bait being offered. Hurt people hurt people. They'll often confuse love with dysfunction and chaos. So once I got clear on what was in front of me, it became easier not to take things personally. Things always come back around. You get to choose what gets your attention and energy and what doesn't. I'm not saying I was perfect during this experience. I had moments of frustration, being angry and taking out pain on people around me and overall not being my best self. I'm human. But what I'm saying is that I didn't let those feelings get the best of me. And I learned to master them through the tools I had learned over the years. Whether it was a breath exercise when I was feeling particularly frustrated or going for a bike ride to channel the negative energy in a productive way. It became more peaceful to not get distracted and instead carry on with love at the center. We have to remember, distractions do not allow us to think clearly and with open minds. It causes brain fog, a lack of openness and empathy, and inner chaos. Being clear and aligned with my highest self was a radical choice. It was self-mastery. I don't know many men who would have the self-control to not react when going through a situation like this, let alone have to work alongside the person on a world tour, but I did, and how I handled this scandal was absolutely intentional. Energy check. Being unbothered. Why is it important to you to be unbothered? Is being unbothered the best thing to do for every situation? How important is your peace? What makes being unbothered worth it? How important is it to you to be in control of your emotions? No one could pave the way for me. I had to be the prototype. I had to be the man and mentor that I wanted growing up. I had to choose that path. Everything I was walking through at the time pushed me to be a new person, a person I would be proud of. I would not allow certain things to throw me off track, even if it was happening maliciously. The clarity this brought to my life has reverberated into my business. It's taught me personal value and what it truly means to be committed to self. How we show up in the world is a reflection of so many things, our traumas, our joys, our failures, and our successes alike. Mastering my emotions was like a mirror to not just the outside world, but also myself. Realizing the extension of power within myself changed a lot for me. When I sat and thought about the type of impact I wanted to leave on the world, it became so much clearer that I have the power to set the tone for someone else's behavior, even if they choose not to change. How I move through the world will at least give them something to think about. This intention can affect their story. Mastering my emotions taught me about leading by example for my kids. It continues to teach me valuable lessons on leadership. I've come to the realization that when you lead by example, 
you create an idea of what's possible. People can look at you and say, if he can do it, I can do it. Leading by example has made it easy for others to see the different ways they can greet and learn from the adversity that shows up in their lives. When I learned where my roots were and what I was planted in, the harvest of my experiences was divine teachers and abundant creators. That alone commanded attention and created deeper integrity. If I allowed the negativity and poor actions of others to infiltrate my space, mastering my emotions would have been much harder. The entire process of learning how to be in tune with myself and my feelings, good and bad, pushed me forward and showed me how to get out of my own way. I discovered what it meant to truly focus on myself and be the best I could be despite what was in front of me. While some may not understand this, everything I walked through with Ame and Mega's mom was a blessing. It brought me closer to my truth and reminded me of what I wanted and what I didn't. It made me more focused, committed, and clear. And not reacting out of anger, fear, or pain allowed space for true inner healing. Our healing is no one else's job but our own. But before we can truly dive into that truth, we have to make a choice. Hate cheating, stealing, and intentional wrongdoing do not elevate love. Going back and forth and trying to prove a point is draining. I was committed to staying focused, not pulled down into a vortex of trauma and hurt. Something that I hold very close to my heart is remembering that everyone has learned love differently, be it in a clear and healthy way or in a confused and unhealthy way. There will be people in our lives who believe that love and pain are synonymous. When hurt is all you know in the face of love, it's easy to get confused. People, myself included, only have the emotional capacity to change when they are ready to. Energy check. Master your emotions. What are some things that you can do to remain calm in an intense situation? What are the benefits of doing deep breathing exercises? How important is it to know when to express yourself? When is it essential to give yourself space? How can meditation support your emotional intelligence? Over the years, I have grown to be so much more aware of myself to the point that I can feel things coming before they arrive. So this situation wasn't a surprise to me. It was, however, a reminder to trust the feeling and things that present themselves, even if they're subtle. It's one thing to be aware of your emotions and intuition. It's another thing to do something about what you feel. And that attunement is where the boys get separated from the men. I'm not going to lie. This type of soul work is exhausting. It's so much easier to move through the world blindly than it is to move intentionally. It takes a lot of brain power energy, and awareness to really know yourself and enjoy your life. You have to energetically be sound. What I've come to know well on my journey is that true enjoyment is allowing things to just be, even the things we cannot control, even the things that may be hurting us. That is the centerpiece of mastering our emotions and cultivating inner peace. Being okay with whatever outcome, even if it's a trying one, offers up a sense of emotional ease. There is joy in surrendering and having trust in what we cannot change. This has been a great takeaway for me as a man and a father. The world may look at me as the king of being unbothered, but it's so much deeper than that. The importance of being unbothered is to exercise self-control and be aware of the people who purposely go out of their way to inflict pain, confusion, and reactionary energy on you. Every day, I am making a purposeful choice to not get swept up in the negative and toxic cycles of others. I try my best to not pay attention to things that don't serve me, and I don't take things personally. Projections are not my truth. I would much rather deal with issues head on if it's serious enough, but more often than not, I choose to protect my peace and keep moving. Every day, I am committing to being the man that I needed growing up. I couldn't master my emotions if I wasn't also committed to not allowing certain things to have power over me. Being unbothered supported my peace of mind and showed me that sometimes how people treat us is less a reflection of us 
and more a reflection of them and their unresolved trauma. Not getting swept away in emotional currents puts me in a great position to be open to finding solutions and learning the beauty of acceptance. Having this type of dedication and clarity around my choices and emotions is deeper than being unbothered. It's a lifestyle and commitment to deeply rooted freedom. I am liberated by my choice to not feed into the nonsense that others try to project on me. Being on tour with someone who was actively trying to disrupt my peace of mind was the test of a lifetime. It took discipline and willpower to not get distracted by dysfunctional behavior. Co-parenting with someone who didn't have the emotional capacity to be cordial and non-manipulative because of her own trauma was beyond emotionally challenging. But I refused to let the toxicity and brokenness of someone else interrupt the intentional life I was dedicated to living. Mastering emotions is a true test of manifesting and adhering to inner harmony. If we let people and things not aligned with our highest self or good pull us down, we are destined to succumb to the pressure. Being unbothered meditation. I am walking away from toxicity. Be unbothered. Sometimes we go far for people who deserve very little. Be unbothered. I am willing to find a new way or make one. Be unbothered. I am disrupting ignorance with clarity. Be unbothered. I will gather my thoughts. Be honest with myself. Be unbothered. I know now all that matters is what is meant for me. Be unbothered. I know that some things are meant to be, but not meant to last. Be unbothered. I stand firm in my truth, like a rock undisturbed and unmoved. Be unbothered. Ignorance and rudeness crave attention and acknowledgement. Be unbothered. My peace of mind and the well-being of my children matter above all else. Over the years, the clearest takeaway I've uncovered is that checking in with ourselves, even under extreme circumstances, pressure, and stress, is pivotal to our growth. Being tested on tour and in my relationship with my ex made it clear that settling was not an option. I was not going to lose myself in hopes of finding answers that had nothing to do with me. Regardless of what was thrown my way, being emotionally reactionary would not have been conducive to my growth. I refused to engage in low frequency behavior. Doing so would have gone against everything I had built for myself on a spiritual level, everything I was trying to show my children. Unhealthily reacting to what we cannot control does not create room for growth or change. Instead, it builds walls and barriers that are hard to dismantle. What does create room for expansion and elevation is making the choice to stay focused and not take things so personally. Keeping a clear mind and perspective, even when faced with obstacles, allows for intentional problem solving and acceptance when we don't have or can't find the answers we're looking for. Being unbothered and mastering my emotions has allowed me to sit in the discomfort and ask myself the hard questions. What do I want? What matters the most to me? What will my children think? Processing all of this has shown me that I deserve to pause and take a moment to recalibrate. Everything impactful takes time, even when we're working through conflict, discomfort, and negativity. I chose to stay grounded in peace because peace is bliss. And in the presence of emotional tranquility, we grow closer to the truth. Energy check. Mastering emotions. What has adversity taught you about yourself and how you respond to it? Where do you need to slow down and pause in your life? Who inspires you to be your best self? What has love taught you about growing? How are you learning to master your emotions? Let life wake you up to the possibilities before you. Uh, 
Okay, so this particular chapter was all about, you know, we're into part two now, physical, mastering emotions unbothered. And the thing that I can say about this particular chapter, I don't have too much to say because unfortunately um, I allowed my train of thought to be interrupted. And so I didn't read the chapter all in one sitting. I actually stopped and then picked up. But from what I gather from the last bit of this chapter um, is that, you know, mastering the emotion of being unbothered. I love what he said about how exhausting doing all of this spiritual work and self work is because it really is no joke. I don't know if any of you or if you who are listening, I don't know if you've ever gone to therapy. I haven't personally gone to therapy, but I, because uh, I'm afraid of paying for it, honestly, I don't know if I can afford it. I've never researched that far, but anywho, <laughs> um, for me, it is exhausting because what I do is I will listen to podcasters or therapists and they'll, you know, they'll have like little exercises that you can do outside of having to book a session with them. Right. And the work that it takes, the patience that you have to have for yourself and, um, just the, you have to have the ability to, well, not even the ability, you'd have to make yourself sit down to really think about some things. And what's really difficult, and uh, Omarion said it in the last few pages of the chapter, is sitting yourself down, even when it's really hard, even when the circumstances are really tough, sitting yourself down and pinpointing, you know, why am I feeling this way? Where is this feeling coming from? How does this make me feel? How do I want to react? But how should I react based on the person that I said I wanted to be? I can't just let everybody get me out of my character just because this is hard or it's uncomfortable. And I really respect him for saying that because it's a philosophy that I've picked up for myself. I want to make sure that I understand for myself that things are going to be hard. But just like I heard in a recent podcast that I listened to, it's called Black Girls Heal. Something as simple as telling yourself, I can do hard things really is a game changer. And it's crazy. The simplest phrases and the simplest actions unlock and give yourself permission to do things. It's really cool. It really is. But it's like, you know, realizing for yourself that, hey, the thing that I said I wanted to do is going to be hard. But then telling yourself, I can do hard things. I can do. Remember what our parents used to tell us when we were little? You can do anything you put your mind to. And it's true. I can do anything I put my mind to. The tough part is just remembering that I said I wanted to do it. And then the kind of person who I saw myself being what would they do? I should be acting as though I am already that person. Yes, I do still have some things that I need to do to build towards that persona and build towards the level that I want to be on. But why am I wasting time wishing I was something when I could be actively working towards being it? And actively working towards being it is exhausting because we we have to live in a way that's not common for everybody else so we're separating ourselves like you know and oh gosh there's so many things it's it's funny i think about this all the time too right so i'm i'm an audio engineer as well as a singer and a songwriter so the thing that's interesting right in order to take singing seriously and take music as a career seriously i encourage people like you have to buy more studio time you can't just get two hours every few months and expect to be as great as you say you want to be. But the caveat is to get more studio time, you have to pay more money, right? So you're paying more money that maybe you didn't have necessarily, or it's really hard to save that money up. But then you got to ask the question, okay, what am I going to do to make this money? What kind of sacrifices can I take to make this money? So you get more time, right? And then I have to tell people, well, it's technically as the engineer, it's not my job technically to make you give me the best performance my job is technically just for me to give you the best sound quality but just because you have good sound quality doesn't mean you have the best performance right 
So if you want me to vocally produce you and pull the best performance out of you, it's gonna cost more per hour for me to do that. So not only are you buying more studio time, but it also costs more per hour to get the direction that you should be getting to get the best possible song. And it's gonna take even longer because I can't just let you give me one or two takes and expect that to be perfect. No, I have to push you and tell you like, hey, this one word, I gotta be meticulous with you. You know, that was great, but this one word, the word and was a little bit flat. That was great, but towards the end of the phrase when you were saying raises, you actually got a little flat at the end of that or your cadence wasn't quite right. So let's sing this entire line over. And so how I'm relating that to this chapter is, you know, or more so that that one line that really sticks out to me where he's, he said it's exhausting doing this work. It is because as soon as you figure one thing out, you realize that, oh, that's just a small piece in a huge pie that I haven't even begun to see the entirety of. And you realize that there's more and more work to do and it's gonna be harder and harder. It never gets easier. That's, that's the annoying thing, it never gets easier. <laughs> but who said that this work was easy? And who said that the kind of people that we wanna be who said that we can slack off? Like we can't slack off because that's not who we said we wanted to be, right? So we have to hold ourselves to a higher standard even while understanding that we cannot do what everyone else is doing. So we cannot act how everyone else acts and we can't react how everyone else reacts. And we have to, we have to respond to things in a way that's going to vibrate with the person we are striving to become and not who we are right now. So it's it's a lot of pressure to put on ourselves, but you know, it's holding ourselves to a certain standard and that's really what I what I got from this chapter. Um and I'm thankful for that because it just reaffirms a lot of things that I was already thinking, right? So hopefully you enjoyed this read along as well and hopefully you kind of got either the same kind of inspiration or, you know, the chapter inspired some other thoughts in yourself as well. And definitely make sure that you are doing the journal prompts. It's taken me a while to get chapters three and four done because I had I wanted to make sure that I do the journal entries as I'm going along. I don't wanna just read through this whole thing. I feel like it's meant to be kind of a self-help kind of thing. So, you, you know, gotta do the work. I can't just read the book, I gotta do the work as well. And I would encourage you to do the same. Pause the things if you need to, rewind if you need to, but make sure you're doing those journal entries and really taking the time to listen to the meditations. But yeah, make sure you follow Lexi Quotes everywhere. And Lexi is L-E-X-C, all one word, but Lexi Quotes on Instagram, Lexi Quotes on YouTube. And soon I will be making sure that I update my website. Um, there's a Lexi Quotes page on there. Um, so yeah, keep up with all that stuff. And Thank you so much for listening along with me. Until next time, my name is Lexi. Peace.